Well, we'll call this meeting to order at uh, 646. How's that? Is it 646? Yep. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. So, um, do we have any new items to uh, add to the agenda that anybody wants to talk about? That um, well, I, I have some things? questions that need to be answered for the uh, Friends of Deerfield. So if we could right. add that, that'd be awesome. I'm just going to have Jen scan the um, Waitley save the date as an idea for us to do for next year because they're already saving, you know, the June 26, 2022 well, Waitley. Where, where I'm working with Casey, I'm, I'm in the process of designing. She gave me like the template size for um, a mailing a postcard of what we're going to mail out for. And I think we we're looking to do it the first week of July or so. Um, so yeah, if you want me to see what the other side looks like, let uh, send it over. That'd be great. Yep, I will. I'll have I'll have Jen scan it. Peter, oh, could, Peter, okay. could you also add um, just um, insurance for the town? Because I had a question about that. Okay. Thank you. You can take off the tree removal and milling of wood because we don't have any info right now. Okay, well, we'll just hit it and just table it. Okay. Uh, okay, so that goes in there. All right, um, I guess the first order of business is to approve the minutes of last, uh, last meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Jay, you got, you're muted, Jay. You're muted. I'm seconding it. There you oh. go. Okay. All, All in favor? favor. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. All right. I, uh -huh. Since it's unanimous, it's okay, but just remember we're supposed to do say our names for the vote. But oh, okay, it's unanimous. Well, it doesn't matter. Not that it matters, but our names come up under each of our pictures, and we all raise our hands. I ought to do it, but I'll. <laughs> well, well, well it's because you're you're supposed to under this thing, you're supposed to um, say your name and then say I, but. Whatever. It okay. was unanimous. It was unanimous, so it doesn't matter. It was unanimous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Facebook committee, the committee lists and brief descriptions. Um, Holly emailed over the parade description, and I emailed over the gala description. I emailed that just before the meeting started, so if you didn't get it, it should be in your inbox now. Okay. Uh, do you anyone feel that uh, we need? To, was, did you have any questions? Are you comfortable with the uh, descriptions that you had, or did you need any feedback? Um, I think. I mean, I got it out because that was my commitment for today. Maybe we should yep. just see if there's questions by the next meeting or. Individually, people could just send questions to each of us if there are suggestions. Okay. Yeah, I think individual email to the person who sent it out. That way there's no um, conflict Conflict of the open meeting law. Yep. And that like, if we want to add more to it or take away, we can edit it to um, get feedback and before the next meeting and discuss it at next month's meeting. That, that sounds good. Well, actually, it'd be later this month, so yeah. Correct. Okay, so we're just going to postpone the um, approvals until next meeting. Uh, we'll send any comments by email. Yes, just send it to the one person, though. Don't send it to everyone. Just send it to Holly for parade feedback and to me for the gala feedback. Okay. Um, and then we can discuss that. So Holly, for the agenda next month, just put, make it an item to discuss yep. any feedback on the yep. descriptions. Yep. 
All right, good. Um, any other comments, Jay, Carolyn? You, do you have any? Oh, I, I saw the that? parade one. I thought that was really um, complete. My only suggestion was, um, you know, we, we could be thinking about a rain date. That was the only thing I had because of the Hatfield, um, Hatfield experience. But I haven't seen the gala thing, so I'll have to, um, you know, get back to um, Jennifer on that. Okay, if uh, nobody has a disagreement with that, we'll um, take that and uh, move on. Uh, next item, the post office cancellation stamp. Is that something you were looking into, Holly? I, I can't remember. No, Carolyn oh, said oh, she was actually, gonna stop in. Yeah, I didn't do it, I'm sorry. Let me put that down as to go see Robin. I'm sorry, I completely spaced on that. All right, we'll just take uh, that question. Um, what, uh, what, did, uh, what, do, what do we want? Did we want the two, the two um, cancellations? Was that what we decided? I believe so. That's what we're looking at, yeah. Okay, so, all right. I'm, I'm so sorry. See, see if it's even feasible. I mean, I'm not yes. sure what how wrapped around the post office is going to get with its rigs. Yeah, I know Robin is wicked good. So I will, I will, I mean, she's really accommodating. So I, and she was the one that had volunteered this initially with Kathy Melnick. So I will follow up on her. Cause I, I know I touched base with her at Christmas time when I was dropping off packages, she had asked about it. And I said, mm -hmm. we were, you know, hadn't really talked about it since, but um, I'll follow I, up. I think we also had discussed maybe seeing if we could um, generate some interest in developing the artwork, um, maybe as a contest or something. Am I remembering that right? So to see what we might be able to submit and how, how we would do that. Yeah, okay. Were we talking about an em a separate envelope, Holly, to that we have a, 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 an em um, sort of a, a symbol or a, like a stamp that would go on the envelope itself, plus the cancellation. Is that what you were talking about? I think, I yeah, I, mean, I was trying to remember. I think it was an envelope that we were looking to do yeah. something where. I, just, I sent you a couple of examples of, of envelopes. They had the canceled stamp, but they also had an embossed, uh, like canceled, I don't know what, there's gotta be a term for it, but it's a, it was like a little cartouche. It was on on the envelope that yeah. commemorated yeah. the forty fiftieth. I'll, I'll share that with you, Carolyn, just so you'll have that in front of you. Yes, thank you. Okay, I, I'd appreciate that. And I'm I'm terribly sorry. I, I just spaced out on that. It's all right. Um, okay, so the town the tree removal were. We're not going to follow up on that. We've got no. Um, last, I was waiting to hear whether or not the trees were tagged because they're up at the uh, place off of five and ten. Is it Lesco? No, the more. Thank you. I knew it was an L, and you said Lesco earlier, so that just made me think of it. Um, so, um. Because I didn't know where the trees were, the size of the wood. I mean, we have three of them, I believe, and they're a decent size. Um, I think it's just getting the information from Thayer Street Associates to see about the milling cost and all of the details and to know what they can produce. But um, I'm going to go. I'm going to email what I'm thinking. I'm going to email uh, Casey and Jen Gannett to see if they had, if Kevin had gone up there and I'll, I can email Kevin directly and ask him to um, about that because I was waiting to hear back. Okay. Well, if you want to do that, I can, uh, I'm down here now for the next week or so. So I could take a run up and get some board foot lengths and that sort of thing. If, 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 if you want, if, if Kevin hasn't done it. Yeah, I also got your email about going over the photos and I'll uh, send, I'm available. I just didn't have the time 
to email you back before. So I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I, I, they're, most of them are on my computer. If you, if you want to come over to the house, we can sit down or I can go over to meet you somewhere. Great. Somewhere. Thanks. Yep. Um, All right. Next uh, item would be the website. Okay, so the town has done their part. We have access to Wix. Um, it's paid for. Peter signed the warrant or the invoice, however that's supposed to go as acting chair. Um, I'm currently working uh, with Tim Hilchey because it ha the website has to be directed to Wix. It's this long convoluted process I will not bore you with, but it's in progress. Um, so I'm kind of working on content that I can cut and paste into the site once everything's settled and it should hopefully be done within the next week for um, directing it to the server, to the platform. So um, it has to be done a certain way, um, just so you know. So I, if I understand that you would have background work. So do you think by our next meeting it might be something we could look at. Yes, uh, in the interim, I can send a link looking for feedback because it's really going to be mostly um, the events page. Um, and that was the other thing I wanted to actually ask tonight. So it's going to obviously have the an, a contact us if you'd like to volunteer um, so that it'll have a way for people to email the committee for, you know, for volunteer info. It'll have like a list, a calendar with our upcoming meetings um, that we can populate. We'll also have events calendar for 2023. So um, we'll definitely wanna solidify and make sure that all of those are good where they are so we can populate um, and put them on. There will also be um, the work that the UMass grad students did on the site um, under history. So there will be, I'm envisioning right now, um, you know, like a monthly calendar for like meetings of an, the annual, an annual event thing for all of our events that we have planned out. Um, I'm going to put a brief synopsis under them. So people kind of have an idea as to what they're going to be, um, for the ones that we have, you know, discussed at length. And I'm obviously going to ask for feedback as to what that looks like for everyone. Right. And then the history piece. Um, once we get new grad students in, in the fall, if they work on the same project, um, you know, we're going to rotate the data that's in there. Um, and then I envisioned also photographs, you know, from the community over the past I know not technically 350 years because cameras weren't in existence, but <laughs> if there is artwork, um, postcards and other things depicting, you know, buildings or the region for the past 350 years, um, you know, that's something that I would like to have on there. Um, Great. Is there any other content you would like to see on the site? Um, you know, the only thing that I was concerned about is um, people have, uh, from this is just my experience from trying to ask people to volunteer, having an open-ended um, volunteer for our, you know, committee or volunteer for the 350th, it's overwhelming to people. They want more specifics. Yep. So I was wondering if we could set it up so that we have the subcommittees um, so that like say Holly's parade committee, if people are interested in the parade, they could sign up for the parade committee. If they're interested in the gala night, they can sign up for the gala night, you know, that kind of thing. Because um, if, if, if it's not more definitive, then people hesitate to um, volunteer. No, it'll be a direct ask. Oh, I okay. had gotten emails um, specifically for the parade and I let them know that we would be discussing it and to check the town website, um, you know, for our next meeting info. So I was hoping people would be on tonight, but um, I hear what you're saying. 
and that's totally doable on the site. So that's not an issue. Okay. It's just that, you know, in that way, somebody like Holly can get the, the persons that are interested in like the parade committee. Yep. And, and, and yeah, then, I've been, know, so for those who, those who have volunteered for, I've responded and I gave info to Holly before. So, but we weren't at that juncture where there's anything definitive. Um, so as soon as we got that, I, I let the people know that we would be in touch. Perfect. So okay. I've only have one name buried, um, but the recent ones you said you got, I don't have names. You just had said you had one parade and one for steering committee. I thought I had E4 to do the emails. N no, I think you text me that you got some volunteers, but. Um, okay, I'll go in and make sure you get those. Okay. Um, and that sort of brings me to, um, I think there was someone who is interested in the steering committee that yep. you had said. So is that somebody who wants to join this committee or is thinking um, about I it? I emailed them back and let them know that when our next meetings were. Mm -hmm. So I haven't heard anything back. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jen, you've got uh, a questionnaire for the history committee. I think you can just put that in the history uh, section. That was specific towards people that might be interested in developing some historical uh, okay. event or whatever. Yeah, hold on one second. My pencil broke. And if, if, if you need it, the, I think you could pull, if you want it, I think there's things in that one page questionnaire that you could kind of pull out for any committees you wanted to as a, as a questionnaire kind of format. Uh, Great. It's really trying to say, you know, what kind of skills could you bring to, you know, whatever event uh, you, you, you want to participate in? Do you, you know, do you have computer skills? Do you have, um, you know, handy with a hammer? I mean, it's, it's that sort of thing. Uh, a little more friendly than not telling them what there is, but it, it sort of puts it back on them. Well, maybe you just bring a willingness to put in a lot of effort and, and you don't have any skills and would you like to learn something, so. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of in the volunteer specific ask section. Right. I'm just writing some notes. Yeah. So that sounds great. Um, I'm glad you finally got through this hassle with the WIC thing. I was, we were going around and around and which account are you going to take it out of and who's going to do what, and whatever. No, it, I'm surprised because it was specifically stated when I went in the day that I went in that it was coming out of our donation account and that information was shared with uh, Brenda, the accountant prior to even. Yeah, well, and I got a note from Pat and she said, well, it was this and it was that, whatever. And it, if it's done, it's done. <laughs> I just wanted to keep you in the loop. <laughs> I, I think I think once Brenda get understands what we're doing, there's not going to be an issue because she's well, pretty straightforward and she is really, really good accountant. So Brenda I think knew. Brenda, Brenda got all that detailed information when I was first originally asking what was what, because she's the one who told me the process. Right. And so just working direct with Brenda and bypassing you know, everybody else that has an opinion is probably the best thing to do. And that way Brenda is on top of everything, so. Okay, well, it, it, it seemed to, I got, a, I got a couple really brief emails back and forth with her just to, Good. you know, settle, settle things if things needed settling and, and uh, find, the, find the warrant or the authorization. Yep. So um, the other, so pretty much for the website, that's pretty much going to be it. Um, right. we, we can also link all the social media accounts there as well. So there's no issue on um, data usage or whatever else there was concern with before. So we should be good with that. Um, so um, obviously Facebook will be cross-referenced to the web page and vice versa and Yep, so when you put the um, social media icons on the page, like yep. um, that other site I told you about before that I designed, that I designed, yep. The, yep. you click on the icon, it brings you right to the page. So if you have to log in, like, 
for Facebook, you probably have to have an account. I don't know if you do or not for that one. Um, but uh, for most of them, it'll bring you like to the Instagram account, to this Twitter or, or Facebook, whatever is there. But I think the 350th right now, we only have uh, Facebook. And I think we were going to create an Instagram account because we were going to, um, you know, mostly share the pictures from, from the events and, and such on, on that particular page. Um, so we don't have to worry about storing them anywhere. They're just permanently there. And I don't, you don't have to usually have an Instagram account to go look on Instagram. Um, you should be able to access those pictures. So I, I know when Julie set up the Facebook page, it's an open account um, that non-users can see things. So, good. so that, that is good. And um, obviously connection to email will be all on all the accounts if people want to email the, the Deerfield 350. Yep, it'll be um, contact us. Like there'll be a button for that if people want to send an email. Yep, perfect. Keep it over. Okay. Uh, future meeting dates for summer season. I, I thought because the summer just you know gets busy for everybody, we should just maybe visit our traditional date that we would meet and see if anybody has any conflicts, so we could ahead of time, look at an alternative date. Oh, right there. So the, the three dates for June, July, August um, are June 28th, July 26th, and August 30th. Um, so I'm, I may not be able to do the August 30th. And then I was actually going to bring up that maybe starting in the fall, monthly maybe isn't going to be enough, depending upon what we've got going on. And obviously we can wait until then, but just kind of throw out the idea that we might want to shrink up our, our gap time, maybe twice monthly or every three weeks or something like that <clears throat> as we go forward. Yeah. How, how's everybody in terms of Mondays typically? Is that, is that a, a good day, typically a good day for people? For me, I don't really have any um, other conflicts uh, uh, other than sometimes I go to the planning board meeting, which is the first mon Monday of the month. So, uh, and the other meetings are earlier than 6.30, uh, normally four o'clock and 4.30. So, on the other Monday meetings. Well, so um, well, I was just thinking about Holly's suggestion and, and it may be that it turns out we do need one. I was just thinking about, you know, every every other Monday, if Mondays seem to be good, that, that may be one way to, to do it is just to reserve it. And if we need it, we can decide at, at a particular meeting or if it if we know it's pretty likely we could just schedule it in. But rather than try and go all over the map and find a day. If, if people uh, are generally comfortable with Mondays, maybe we ought to just try and stick with Mondays and just hit alternate weeks if we need them. The second Monday of the month, I've got the Historic Commission. Okay. And is then that, the- Is that um, same time? It's usually at um, 5.30 to 7. Or yeah, it's five thirty to seven, and then on Tuesday, the second Tuesday or second uh, Thursday, and sometimes the sec or the last Thursday of the month, I've got the ZBA. Um, what if we looked at on the off week to do an earlier in the day meeting, if we did need to? I I know previously we were alternating, um, you know, mornings and evenings. Uh, for a stretch and then we when we hit zoom this just ended up being a good solid time yeah. but as Peter suggested you know if by September we want to sneak in a meeting what if that every other one could we do it earlier in the day um I don't have a problem doing it earlier in the day uh, I have a standing usually two o'clock um two to three every week but mm -hmm. I I only mention that if we have any of the subcommittees active at that point, 
um, people may have work or whatnot. So I don't know if you, they'll have like a separate one and then just send an email to report or how that will work or how that will look. Well, what if we do this, what if we have a morning meeting, but reserve those morning meetings for things that really have to have an action item uh, to, you know, to move forward and just use the monthly meetings for other discussions uh, of, of other items that, that don't have a critical nature. That's, that's a great idea because then if we did a morning meeting, we, we could sure. do a brief one for action right. items. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm planning. Are you that. referring to the 8:30 time frame like last, like before? Doesn't matter. I mean, I have flexibility. I'd like to work with whatever everybody's schedule is best. We but are able. We are able to keep up the Zoom meetings. So um, uh, at least until in November. So um, uh, you know, as a as an option. So um, for and and meet the open meeting law. So um, that might be expend, expen, extended because um, it's so popular. Um, you know, a lot of people actually now like Zoom because they don't actually have to go down physically to the meeting. So that the whole quorum issue, who is going to be, because before you had to have, you could do Zoom, but you had to have a quorum. And so at least through November, we can, do the zoom meetings without an issue so do we do it late in the morning like 11. is that going to mess up jen if she's got a two o'clock no i i think if it if it's act if it's the action items i mean i can't we, imagine one of those going more than a half an hour so uh, so we, really <laughs> have you not met our meet our yeah so let's um i would say go a little earlier than that Jen. Ten o'clock's good with me. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. I usually my most of my meetings are in the afternoon, um, like one, two, four. Okay. So Jay, is that work for you? Yeah, I'm I'm fairly flexible, but then over here we've got uh, medical visits and issues. Many times I get a call the day before, so okay. uh, you you have to live with me doing this crazy schedule. Okay. All right. So um, we should look at that starting in September. Okay. Yeah. So that for that action would, items, right? For action items. And we would do that the second Monday and leave the fourth Monday for our regular meeting. Yeah. Okay. So that means 9 13 is going to be an action item meeting at 10 a.m. And then um, the 27th would be the regular. I just want to get these out. Um, and I can send, well, you'll, you'll be putting these in the minutes, right, Pete? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so September 13th, October 27th. November, what do you got? Well, I, I, why don't we just schedule through October because I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do in November. Okay. Okay. Well, um, we'll, 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 have, we'll have more information from the governor in the next two or three weeks, but I don't, we don't know anything beyond November at the moment. Yeah, okay. but you also don't know what will happen. I mean, God forbid we have any upticks again. Yes, that's true. So for October, the second would be um, Indigenous People Day. So um, would we look at the Tuesday morning, the 12th, in place of that? We could. I don't right. have a problem with that. I thought we were looking at the second Wednesday. Is that not? Not Wednesday, Monday. Monday. Oh, Monday, sorry. So the second Monday is, Columbia, or, you know, well, we're going to change it to Indigenous People's Day, but um, hopefully. So, so if we go with the Tuesday, the 12th, yeah. that would be workable? Yeah. And okay. then, um, okay. And then. We'll call it quits there. We'll call it quits there. And hopefully we'll have 
All right. We'll have more information. We'll definitely have more information, I would say, by in, in another month or so, but even as close as two weeks. Uh, so my, my, my question on the meetings is we would have permission to continue to do Zoom, but yes. can we return to in-person if we prefer? Yes, you can. We're going to open, okay. we're going to vote to open the town hall tomorrow. And the reason why is really, if, if you're vaccinated, um, the vaccine is extraordinary. It, it really is very effective and um, people should be safe. The problem is when you're indoors, your aerosols will build up and there's no way to, to really know who's vaccinated and who's not. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't have a way. So I think we're going to still try to limit. I, I mean, people, I mean, I trust most people. So if we're going to have a meeting, but if we're going to have a controversial meeting, like a huge select board meeting that, you know, people, 60 or 70 people are going to show up. I'm, I'm not too excited about that. I'm not sure how safe that's going to be because you have no idea how many people are actually vaccinated and who's not. And there are, you know, break, there are breakthrough infections. It's just that you probably are not going to get sick. Um, you know, like I said, these vaccines are really, really good. So you're probably not going to get very sick and you're not going to get hospitalized or, you know, certainly not pass, but you might be able to pass it on to somebody that is not vaccinated in your household, right. like young children. So I, I've, since I watch my grandchildren, I'm, I'm really very concerned because mm -hmm. they're not vaccinated. So I'm going to be very careful, even though I've been vaccinated for a while. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we have to just, I'm not anxious to go back in person. And, um, but it's, it's, it's going to be an individual thing. So we can sort it out. We can certainly meet in person. Um, it, it, this small group is not a big deal. You, we meet in the big meeting room and we you know, sit at a couple tables. We're gonna be we're gonna be safe because the doors are open. The you know there's gonna be plenty of ventilation, but you know like I said, a big controversial meeting or a giant. If we have some kind of organizational thing, we're gonna have lots of people. At this point, I'm not sure how safe that would be or how people feel about that. Yeah, yeah. Myself. So we. That's why the governor, you know, is going to give us some guidelines on this in-person stuff. But then we've we've got to sort out what we want to do individually, as you know. Can hey, Carol, you know? can the town set up something so that they could be outdoor meetings in the warmer weather? Yes, yes. We um, there is going to be a senior tents set up. We the we actually had to, we had the tent set up and we had to actually take it down because the, it wasn't rated for wind conditions, but hopefully we'll get that fixed. So there will be a tent outside and we, and there's picnic tables, both in the front and the back. Um, um, so we can meet outside. So it's not going to be, that's not an issue either. Yeah. That would be a great way to do it. I mean, if, if we have, even if we have a meeting at six 30 in the summertime, it's not going to get dark until, you know, right. eight or nine o'clock. And, and as long as it's the black flies aren't, you know, Darting I'm just gonna say, don't uh, you know? Don't if we have no disease load, that's fine. But if we have West Nile show up in town, no, no, I'm, not, okay. I'm not too excited about the mosquitoes. So, because that's one of the spots that we have to worry about is next yeah. to Bloody Brook. So, um, and it would work pretty well for for day me for morning meetings too. If we meet at ten o'clock in the morning, it's a ten o'clock in the morning actually would probably not be so bad. I was yeah. just thinking at you know once you get six thirty, seven thirty, you get dusk. Yeah, that, you know your mosquitoes are starting to come out, and mm -hmm. I mean we're gonna we're gonna st we're starting trapping this week, so we'll we'll have an indication of what's going on. And last last year we are we lava sided really really well, so the first time in eleven years we had no West Nile in D Deerfield and a, and no Triple E at all either. So I mean I feel like I mean we ha we have information so. But we just have to keep that in mind. If you're going to set up a meeting at dusk, you know, that's all. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on then. Um, Jen, how about your questions from the Friends of your group? Okay. Um, so most of them pertain uh, to the gala. So we've discussed the December 31st 
but do we want a snow date in case of bad weather? I think we better. I think yeah. we better. Um, I, 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 yeah, I think we better. It, uh, in December, there's not so much snow date, but ice. We have a lot yeah. of ice in December. So uh, when would we want to look at? Uh, you have a suggestion, Jennifer? Um, give me a second here. I had to scroll to that year. It's only a year and a half away, by the way. I know. Deerfield Academy is out until um, the after the day after January 1st. Usually that week, you know, whenever January 1st is, they come back. So they come back. So we'll, the 31st is the date that we're looking at. And what day is that? That's a Saturday? That's a Saturday. And then... Why is, sorry, my phone keeps going to the wrong year. Um, and then if they're back. So they would be coming back. On the second? That's the Monday after. Yeah. I'll have to, uh, you know, they'll have their school calendar. I will call Keith find an, and find out what the school calendar is for that day. Um, they, they may be in the driver's seat and how they would want to work with us. I mean, if they're willing to host, they may well, have a suggestion of when our backup date is. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so just so we're clear, because it's a fundraiser thing, while the steering committee, subcommittee can do the decorating and all of that, Friends of Deerfield is negotiating all the other pieces. And that's one of the questions because I know Chris Harris was in touch with the select board with questions and that was something that we had discussed before. Yeah. Um, so that still stands and there's no issue there, correct? As far as I know, as far as I know. The problem is Keith Finan is leaving this July and I have we, the new person coming on, the new CEO, not, I have not met him yet. He's apparently yeah. very nice, but um, obviously we have to connect with him. So I would say um, we got plenty of time and- um, Well, we want to lock down the date so that we have the December 31st. Well, well that's why I'm going to talk to Keith and try to get some uh, semi-commitment from him so that when, the new person comes on we can say it was already agreed upon <laughs> i know that sounds terrible but um, no i think i think that was the goal is to have it all solidified before the end of this month so um i know chris sent an email to the select board on may 4th with a bunch of questions and never heard back so that's part of the questions that i have for tonight um so yeah. he probably never heard back because I don't remember getting that email actually. Yep, we got it. It uh, was sent to your select board too. Okay. Sometimes those things go in the junk, uh, you know, the spam thing. I, I, Cause I don't, I don't remember getting it, but uh, what are the other questions? I will, I think we should have a snow date or an ice date. Um, yep. uh, and I will call um, Keith on that. And so what were some so, of the other Here's, this is, this is, I guess the process is there's, there's been back and forth conversations about who is, you know, getting the information from the school and who isn't, because I think that was one of the concerns that we had before. And it was kind of guided as to go ahead and do that. But then it was, don't do that. We're still talking about it. Um, well, it's usually, like I explained before, it's usually the chair because you can't, you can't uh, have an, a meeting, uh, you know, a post meeting because it's public. So it's usually the chair who goes forward and asks. But since that was, I'm on the committee here, I, I will call David and tell him that I will follow up on this and try to t talk to Keith about this, um, even though I'm not chair any longer. You know, I mean, the chair rotates every year. So that's also part of the issue is that whoever is the, the point person changes every year. Um, but, but I just, I have to support Jennifer here. 
we have to have some clear direction on who's going to help to facilitate because right now we may have a little window of time to work this out. But as we get further into the game, if there's some questions that need answers or action items, we have to know who's going to be there or to who, answer who, them. Right. Well, I guess I would be the follow-up person, but whoever is currently the chair is the one that would get you the answers that year, whoever's the chair that year. But, but I, for that, Friends of Deerfield, you know, if they're uh, approaching, the, should they be funneling everything through this committee and then you will take it to the select board or should they be working directly with the select board? Uh, I, I, I guess it doesn't, I mean, this committee should be in the loop so it doesn't hurt to have it go through this committee. But I, I would say if we're asking for donations, um, whether it's in kind or whatever, um, for the non, from the nonprofits, it should go directly to the select board. Um, so, but, okay. So this is where I, I, I really need this definitive answer now. Like I hear you say you're gonna follow up with David and I respect that and, um, but it's like where the, the Friends of Deerfield is going to work the pricing with them, see what they're willing to donate and all of those pieces because, or is the select board doing that? Because that's- Oh, no, no, no. We would connect, we would just make sure that Keith is okay with that, uh, like a snow date. Yeah. And then we would work out you know, then, then you would just connect direct. Okay, that, that's they, what I wanted clarification because yeah. it was like seeming as though it wasn't okay to do that. Um, once, once I don't know if that's said, just my perception, but it's just been the, you know, like back and forth where it, it just wasn't clear. Once, once, once it's agreed upon, then, then it's okay to go direct, I guess is the best way to say it. So has well, Deerfield Academy agreed to host the 1231 yet? Not yet. Not yet. So you guys haven't approached them at all? No, that's not true. It's just that- No, we I'm were, asking, we, have oh, you approached them? We, we, are, we were waiting for the new person, but my, my thoughts were that we should um, get a commitment from Keith on, because we need more dates. This new guy isn't even starting for another month or two. And so- I think I will just call Keith. It, their graduation is over. You know, that was this past weekend. So I will call and, and the trustees and everything has happened. So what I will do is call Keith um, right now, uh, tomorrow, and, and just make sure that he has is okay with this as well as a snow date. And that, you know, we'll figure out a way. I'll, I will get the information from him as how he wants to work it with the new person. Okay. And make sure... Um... Keith is aware that Friends of Deerfield is not part of the town structure. It's not a fundraising committee for the town. It's its own separate nonprofit because that's one of the things I've seen in minutes and other pieces referred to. Um, it's its own separate entity. It works to partner with the town and support the town. But because of the ethics thing, I want it to be very clear that yeah. there's a delineation. Yeah, I will. So, so that way... There's no, no confusion when we approach, you know, because uh, more than likely it'll be Chris Harris and Tim Hilchey, um, you know, approaching and I'll go to a meeting or two just to look at, you know, like menu and other things like that as friends of Deerfield. Um, but so that really answers. So thank you for clarifying. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I know it's a different process because of the nonprofit having to be created last year. Um, but, you know, we're at June and with, with Keith leaving, I think it's really important that we get that, especially if the new person isn't coming on for two more months. I know. Um, One of the things that the only reason that it's awkward is because the select board tries to keep control of how much we're asking for. Mm -hmm. um, so if we have, say we have a huge project like a road project or something like that. And then, you know, somebody else goes in for another big ask. It, it, it's hard for us to get, say the priority road project or something. So the idea is just for us to have control over what we're asking for. 
I mean, they've been very good with us um, because they don't have to do anything, but we, we have a good working relationship and, um, it, it, and it changes as the board changes. Yep. The, the point person changes. And so it also, it I, also I said, hard. Yeah. It's also hard because I, I work with Keith. I've worked with Keith for 11 years, whereas say somebody new only has worked for a year. So it's a different. Yeah. That's understandable. But I think also Deerfield Academy, whatever their traditional annual support that they give and how you triage where you want to look for help, they will also understand that this is an unusual year where we may have, you know, an additional ask beyond what we typically ask for, because we also obviously want them to be a, a partner in how we celebrate and have the school be a partner. Well, I had already raised it with Keith before about, you know, reaching out to the, the class of 2023 to make sure that the class alumni um, is willing to participate with us and, you know, stuff like that, just like I did for Frontier. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think, I think that, you know, there's definitely going to be um, participation from them. Um, and, and hopefully we'll have, when we get the new um, director at Historic Deerfield, I don't, I don't know him. Um, I don't know if Peter does, but um, I, I'm going to make sure we have a good um, relationship so that he will be willing to participate with us as well, you know, more active. Uh, Phil, Phil was on his way out, Phil Zay was on his way out. So he probably wasn't as interested. So I'm hoping this guy will be much more interested. You know, I'll, I'll have some opportunities to talk to him as he's as he's coming on board. So he's yeah, supposed Phil's to be here. He's supposed to, yeah, he's supposed to be here in July as well. So yeah. we, it will be good because we'll have hopefully have have a good relationship with everybody. Um, all these nonprofits, we have time to have a, a relationship with them and get them committed to us. Yeah. You know, it's not like next summer, it's this summer. So well, right now, Nancy's as, a, as an interim uh, chair or uh, head of Deerfield right now. If I get a chance, I'll talk to her about it too, just so there's a, a transition. Good, good. And I've, I've agreed to work with the um, Deerfield's fellowship program this summer for some of their interns. So I'll, I'll have the opportunities to be in Deerfield and work with them. Oh, Peter, can I have wonderful. more questions on this list? Sure. Can, right. can I um, ask one question, Jen, before you jump sure. ahead? Um, because I'm still not understanding how all this financial stuff's going to work. So friends of Deerfield are going to put on this gala. And just say hypothetically, we get the go from Deerfield Academy. It's all good. Friends of Deerfield are going to sell tickets. We're going to owe Deerfield Academy money for the event. Yeah. So is the That's town- coming from Friends of Deerfield. I'm sorry? That's coming from Friends of Deerfield. Okay. So does that mean everything that is gonna be paid is gonna be paid from Friends of Deerfield? So for, um, so this is a couple questions that are in. So maybe I can go back and answer once I give, so ask some of these questions that okay. might help you. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. So uh, and before you go any further, let me just clarify. I want to make sure the statement's correct in the notes uh, in the minutes. Sure. So the process is, as defined right now is the select board chair will act as the immediate contact with DA on initiating the gala and a snow date. Once that's agreed to DA, once a DA agrees, the Friends of DFO can work directly with DA on the details. Is this the understanding? Yes. Well, in general, but I'm going to call Keith tomorrow. So, you know. Well, that's fine. I mean, just so yeah. long as from the meet from the meeting right now. Yes. Even that's if that's immediate, where and then once that's set up, uh, if you can. Right. I don't. I I think we probably ought to. If you can get them to commit, it, it's is to get the results distributed to the committee 
So then yeah. Jim knows that she, you know, that she can move ahead on on other ground. So well, I think she'll be emailing me anyways. I'm the president of FOD. Okay. Well, what am I going to do? What I'm going to do is I'll talk to Keith tomorrow. And I will, um, as a result of that conversation, I will send an email out to everybody because it's just informational. Right. Yeah, there can be no debate on it. Yeah. So, um, and and hopefully it will have a snow date. I just don't know what their calendar is on the return date. Yep. Since, um, the 31st is a Saturday. I would assume that they're coming back. They usually come back after the first, but um, that's the weekend already, so. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'd also looked at, um, I don't have the events calendar in front of me, but I think we also had something in February for like, let me just look this up here. Give me a second. Um, it's like an alternate date for, I know we have January vacation time frame for lighting up structures or lighting up, you know, having something lit up to light the cake and to light something in center and, you know, in South <laughs> Deerfield and then Old Deerfield. Uh, With the, the 14, 15 and 16 of January. Right. So, I mean, though that's an alternative because we could light it, um, you know, do a lighting and the celebration the same weekend just i don't know because it's if it's martin luther king weekend do are they still in session i don't know when they usually send people home i don't I know that they right. i think they might have school on on mlk day because i think they do special programs okay uh, the the private schools are in session until march march um, they get a break in march yeah um but the public schools are out on that day i mean that okay. was the day so and i mean if we have to wait till march then i don't know what you think about that i mean no that's too far too, too, too far um okay so to go back to the questions so we discussed before the menu will be a sit-down meal correct yeah all right uh price of tickets what were we thinking? I think we were thinking, weren't we thinking at least $100 a couple? A couple or a person? I don't know. Do you think um, $100 a person is prohibitive? I yes. mean, you want people to be, you want people to participate. Yep. So then we want to do $50 a person and 80 a couple or 90 a couple. Um, I think part of this will be driven on what the anticipated cost would be. No, nope, um, we have to come up with our budget based on ticket sales. I'm not, I'm not following what you're saying. So if we, so depending on, like, are we looking for this to be a 400 person event or smaller 500 person event? Because based, that will base the ticket sales. So if we're doing, you know, $50 a per, let's, I'm just going to throw it up to a hundred just to make my numbers even, because I don't want to do math tonight. So if we're doing 400 people, times a hundred, then we've got, you know, is that a 4,000 or $40,000 budget? 40. Times a hundred. So that'd give us $40,000. If we do 50 times a hundred or 400 people, then you get your $20,000 budget. That's pretty reasonable because you have to pay for menus. So depending on what that is, usually um, that's like half of your person budget, correct? Like normally it's like your food cost. Um, but obviously if they're willing to give us more for nothing, you know, give us more and not have to pay as much, you'll have $10,000 left over. And that's at 400 at $50 a person. Um, so going with half the budget towards food, then you would have 
entertainment, which um, would more than likely be a DJ. Um, then you would have decorations. Then you would have um, a photographer to do something special with a 350th backdrop and a plain backdrop. And then, you know, possibly a photo booth because those things are fun and a lot of people like them. So we were looking at the different stuff and seeing what, um, what we wanted to do as, as a group. Um, we were also looking at doing, to raise additional funds, like a silent auction. You know, if Chris Harris described the uh, old place that they usually do things, like there's an entryway or whatnot that would set up, that would be a good place to put it at Deerfield Academy. For the newer facility, he said, you know, they don't usually really want people to wear heels. So I don't know if they would do it in that new facility or not, given, given that, you know, comment. Um, so we would have somewhere to do an auction. Um, and that is based on going to, you know, a lot of different events where people can just write down their bids with the items. Friends of Deerfield would be responsible for ascertaining any auction items or if someone wants to donate something, you know, they can do that. Um, so it's obviously the rest of the night would be up to whatever the steering committee wanted to do or the subcommittee, like doing the color theme, the linens, you know, decorating a party theme, obviously the 350th, but however, the subcommittee wanted to do it as, um, you know, those types of things, but it's just basing it on the cost analysis, figuring per person is how, you know, like if we're looking to do 400, that gives us our budget. If we're looking to make sure that we get 400 people attending um, and that's how we would figure it out, like what we could spend. Uh, and if we only sold 300 or 350 tickets, you know, and then you're probably gonna get some families or people who wanna purchase a whole table and, you know, buy it outright. So then there could be, a, you know, probably a different cost for that. Um. Um, I, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to have a per ticket cost and have it as a per ticket cost, whether people want to buy a whole table or whether it's a couple. I think a per ticket cost just makes sense because singles then aren't paying more than a couple. Um, per person. Um, I think if somebody wants to reserve a whole table, it's because they just want to sit with people. And, you know, I don't think there's necessarily a reason to give somebody a deal on their ticket cost because they want to sit with people. I, so, I agree because people are going to decide that they're going to buy tickets together. Say, you know, Holly, you're going to say with your friends, you're going to call up your friends and say, hey, let's, let's, let's get our tickets together. So we get a table together. So we have yeah. fun together. You know, I, I, I agree with that. You know, uh, am I going to beat on my kids and see if my kids would come? Yes. But you know, it's, it's up to me to commit and get the, but they're not, they're not going to want to sit with you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's my kids that want to sit with the cool people, not with me. <laughs> well, anyway, if I buy the tickets, they're sitting with me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, I, going, I, I, I don't think there should be any deals. I think it's just 50, if we're going to do 50 bucks, we just do 50 bucks per person. That's, that's my feeling too. Yeah. Okay. Peter? Oh, he went away. Jay, what do you think? Unmute yourself. Okay, by me. So okay. you like $50? Okay. I, I, I mean, that's, that's comparable to a nice dinner out versus... A hundred. I think a hundred is pretty prohibitive. I'd be hesitant to do that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there might Check be, dress code. Things, but we really want to make most of our events accessible to people. And um, I, I think a hundred is pretty prohibitive. Okay. But will the sit down meal have choice of meal? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are we, we so won't know what that is until we meet with them and discuss that. But usually it's a, a poultry, a meat or a fish and then a vegetarian option. Okay, yep. And I think given, given everything we've been through going buffet, no. no. Yeah. Plus we want it to be nicer. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so other, 
Let's see here. You were saying other question. Yep, yeah, dress, code. You dress saying... code was the other thing. Uh, black tie. Sorry, guys, I just totally lost connection there for the last three or four minutes. No problem. Glad you're back. We we were um, all agreeing to and appreciate your input at fifty dollars a ticket. No deal for couples, no deal for doing a whole table, just $50 a ticket. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, one of the things I was gonna suggest is if, if people wanted to, uh, I, I, I like the silent auction part of it, that, that works for me, but one of the things you could do if, uh... You're not there anymore. He froze. Yeah. When, when you say black tie, um, do you mean tuxedo? Yeah. Why do you think that's prohibitive for people? Yep. Because they're going to have, most people will have to rent something. So that's in addition to their ticket cost. We can just say, um, I mean, what do you say when you just say, you know, coat and tie or something? I mean, you got to say something. You don't want people coming in jeans. No, right. we don't want jeans. Right. So, but I think coat and tie is okay. Pete, yeah. you're back. Say what you want because yeah. you, you zoned out again. Well, <laughs> I, I, was just, I was just thinking. Um, maybe Jay the, froze too. Maybe one of the things that you could do would be to have a raffle if you wanted to try and make some extra money that same night and just you know if, if there may be people that are willing to pay more than 50 you know bucks a head but if you had a raffle you might just be able to pick up some extra change that evening as well and if you announce it beforehand people would be prepared for it and that way they could give a little bit more if they wanted to what kind of raffle are you suggesting well you could have it on the tickets themselves and, and, you know, have, if you had a couple of prizes. Um, you could, well, you could have um, some of the, uh, you know, like the, an anniversary plate or, you know, mugs or, you know, some of the, some of the items that the 350 items, I mean, that's, people are going to buy them anyway. So how wonderful if you, you know, had a few to give out and raffle away. Okay. You, mean, you, if, you can have raffle be, tickets at the One meet. at a time. Okay. Sorry, so, everybody keeps talking over and then it freezes and I can't hear who's saying what. So if you have raffle tickets that you actually sell at the dinner for souvenir items. Um, yeah, I got that. I, Holly? I, I'm, I was thinking beyond that you know, if somebody like BBC decided to do a special beer, they might donate oh, yeah. that, that yep. beer for a prize. That would um, go big. Because that, that goes over, you know, really well. Um, I'm sure Treehouse, I think sure Treehouse would be doing uh, something related to 352. So, you know, having our local breweries do 350 and have have them be a, a, a prize would be, every, everyone would love it. I, I would just suggest that if the raffle prizes, I don't think they have to be many, but I would make them kind of a little higher end. Like if there's some memorabilia, maybe make a basket, you know, with a t-shirt and a mug and, you know, do, so if you only had 10 really nifty ones, you know, I think having them rather than 50, you know, $10 raffle prizes. If yeah. we're going to make it a gala kind of event, just, you know, 10 to a dozen of really nice ones. And, and it can be quick done and over. That's, that's a very good idea, Holly. I like that. Yeah. I agree. Okay. And I, and I wouldn't sell them for cheap either. I would, you know, if you're going to do a raffle, you know, Sell them, you know, you could even sell them for $10 a chance or something. Yeah. 
so what is the amount of capacity that we're looking for? Are we looking 400? Are we looking less? Are we looking more? People? Yes. Carolyn, any idea what they hold at like the, the, the dining? Well, um, there, there's 740 kids and they have, have the ability to sit down and eat. So we can certainly do 400 if 400 is what you're thinking of. I, I think that's going good. by. Okay, sorry. I just muted myself so you wouldn't hear it. Um, I think a target of 400 would be okay. Yeah, I mean, that's not too crowded and, and um, but it's, it's enough. I mean, well, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to make it capacity because, you know, old, adults are bigger than kids and. Right. Well, um, that's what we're just looking at. Like what would be the max? So would 450, 400, 500? You know, I'll ask you tomorrow. What do you think would be a good number for adults? Because they're, they're used to doing, um, you know, adult dinners and stuff. Well, they also in the summers allow people to do weddings because I've been to a wedding there yep. and um, you want a dance area. So that takes some of the space away from people sitting. Yep. And when, you don't want the kind of event where you have to excuse yourself from the person sitting behind you because the chairs are so close together. Um, if it's a gala, I think it should be comfortable for people to move around, but full enough so it feels festive. Yep. Holly, when you went to the wedding, how many people were at that wedding? I don't know. I can ask. Okay. I can ask. I, I think we, we should be telling them. I mean, we can get an idea from them, but I think we need to tell them how we, what we want um, for yes. a comfort level, for a comfort level. Um, are we looking to make this 21 and over or are we going to allow minors? Can you not, sir? What? Well, where do we go with the liquor? I think that's the side. They would have to be in charge of that, and they would have to card anybody who had alcohol. If they're going to card them, I don't see why it, it matters. I wouldn't bring a three-year-old to it, but. Uh, well, we, we issue one day liquor licenses to Deerfield. Uh, they don't have a, a liquor license per se. Oh, they don't have tip certification? Well, so I think some of their staff do, but um, they, they have, and they have liquor liability um, for their events. I'm just not sure. I think we have to say it's going to be 21 and over just so that that they're not responsible for um, okay. liquor. Okay, so 21 and plus. Because they're they because the event is at their place, they're picking up the liquor liability on this. But I can ask Keith about that too. The, the yeah. other point kind of, Carolyn, to support that is if we're making this a dressy evening event that's gonna tow into hosting the new year, adults only. I, I think really is more in line with that. That's fine. I just wanted to throw it out there and ask what we want, you know, what we were envisioning it to be. So um, I can see they, people, I, I can see people that might have a 20 year old and, and they want to include it, make it a family event and stuff, but. Do you want to do 18 and up? It, no, no, not, not if, well, let me find out from Keith how they, how they feel about the liquor. Okay. Okay. They're, take, they're taking on the liquor liability for this. So, so. then we, it, there's no issue. I mean, we can do 21 and over. That's not an issue for me. Yeah. I just, you know, you're making the comment of people wanting to bring well, you know, younger have, kids that are 18. Have, yeah. They have events there. Like I said, we, we as a select board give them liquor liability or liquor permits for the, for their events. So let me ask how they handle those events for the underage. Okay. Okay. And see how comfortable they are. I mean, obviously, their carrier, uh, insurance carrier, would feel comfortable if because they have had events in there with under eight, you know, under twenty-one. But 
since we're doing it uh, not themselves, uh, let me just see how he feels about that, okay? But, yeah. but we really can't police that if a family buys tickets and says, well, you know, my son is, is 20 and a college student. We're not going to police it. Yeah. Right? I mean, the, the thing of it is with 21, you eliminate anybody that's going to college. And I, I'm, I'm just wondering what that, what taking that age group out of the event might mean. I, I know myself, if I, if my kids were, you know, if I was going to do this and my kids were like, you know, they're all grouped together. So if there was like a couple 22 year olds and a, you know, a 19 year old or a 20 year old, I would want my kids to come to this. So, um, you know, I don't know. Let me see what Keith says and then we can decide maybe the next meeting. All right. I, I just texted my friend who had a wedding and I guess it was considerably smaller than their capacity. She said it was a little under 200 what they had. So, you and know, that doesn't really there, say how many they could have had. But it seemed like there was plenty of room, right, Holly? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, did, did Hat, I think Hatfield had a gala event and maybe some of the other towns. Log Cabin. Is it can we reach out to them, someone on those committees, and, and find out how many people signed up for their event? That might give us a read in terms of how many people we might anticipate. Because I can't believe we're going to get appreciably more than, you know, Hatfield or Sunderland or Conway uh, would get uh, or had gotten from theirs. I'm, I think we, we, it, I, I think it, we, if we figure out if we want to do the under 21, um, the capacity is, like I said, it, they can do all the whole school. So you have all the kids plus faculty. So there's more than enough room for seven or 800 kid, people. And, and, uh, and then when you're getting eight or 900 people, you're probably packed in. So if we do half of that, four to 450, let me find out from Keith, and that, and I think that will determine how many we w choose to want. Because uh -huh. uh, I, I would have no issue with eighteen and up, because I think that is not going to take away from the evening. But if there's an issue on the alcohol, then we may have to revisit that. Yeah, let me. I'll I'll do this tomorrow, so we'll have a fairly fast answer on this. Okay. Thanks, Carolyn. Yep. Um, other question, is there any special theme or decor preferred? Obviously this subcommittee for Decker, this, so if you pull up the email that I sent out to everyone, it basically lists, um, you know, determining or decorating and those types of things. Um, but I didn't know if we wanted to create a theme. Yes, it's 350th, but are there certain colors we want? over other stuff is there like um i know it's new year's uh and i'm sure it's been done to death because you know but it's the 20s do you want to do the roaring 20s again <laughs> something different um but you know what do we want for a theme do we get the mgm lion no sorry pete <laughs> Unless it's projected on a big screen with the noise, I don't think a lion is coming to Deerfield. I'll be roaring. Um, you know, we've in the past we've had green, just but I think that is lending green and white. But that's part of it has been, you know, that pushed from Deerfield is green and white. But I don't really think that we have. You know the frontier colors are red and white so i you know i don't know if we i thought the frontier colors were blue and red no somebody said red white and blue so yeah i know there's red in there so anyway i don't i don't know if if there's any particular town color i i mean i'm not aware of any I'm, I'm not personally not a big theme person, so I'm the wrong person to ask. 
I like decorations, but if you told me I had to wear a flapper dress. You don't have to wear a flapper dress. You can wear whatever you want. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think what, whatever the committee decides, you know, I think people will buy into because it's going to be fun. Yeah. So I, I agree. I leave, it to, leave it up to the committee. Yeah. yeah. I yep. mean, I, I feel the committee is going to put some thought into this and, and the way what we don't have a committee other than us right now, just the FYI. I know, but there will be a committee because this is a fun event. I mean, there will, somebody will step forward for this. All right, well, keep it in the back of your heads in case no one else steps forward, we have to come up with something. Okay. I, I, um, think, we can do it. I think we can do it. That's not a big deal. Okay. What we have to do is get some younger kids, or, you know, not young, young, but, you know, somebody in their 30s and 40s. And um, I am in my 40s, just saying. Okay. <laughs> I'm 45. I'm not that old. No, so we'll get some younger people in in and you know say what what would you do? How how can we get you to come? And you know, what would you like to see? So how about I post it on Facebook? What do you want for a theme? Yes, that's yeah. good. Let me let me ask Deerville Academy though first. <laughs> no, uh, I'll just say. Uh, I don't have to word it for have, being at Deerfield Academy. I could just say, you know, our kickoff gala, what would you like to see for a theme? And I can put some options. And I'm sure we'll get some snarky comments and they'll just stay or be deleted. Um, okay. Because you've got your trolls no matter what you post. Yeah. It's just part of Facebook and the okay. internet. It's just the okay. internet. Um, but those are all my questions. All right. Is that a doggy? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. I have Luna. I apologize for her all the time. She's being quiet. She's napping because she had an adventure today with me. So, so th that brings me back to my money question. So yeah. this is a fundraiser yes. where the Friends of Deerfield are going to be in charge, in control to raise funds. So yes, you in this particular instance, you are going to be the conduit for paying for everything. Yes. So now let's say the parade's up and we've got different bands that are coming in that we're gonna have fees to bring in. Yep. Um, who's paying for that? So how it's working is, so what any whatever profits are after the gala, that money will be donated to the, to the town bucket or whatever it is for the for the events okay so then how much we raise because we're starting fundraising this year um and so as we move and progress towards 2023 um like we talked about what the budget the budget that you gave like tentative or earlier last year yep. Yep. we started yep. doing that yep. um so as we raise money that money will be donated to the town fund for the okay. steering committee so, or for the 350th. So as it moves forward, those things, you'll be paying for them however you have to go about paying for them through the, through the town donation money. Okay. Um, so, so like, and how we talked about last time, if we get a donation that specifically states they want it to go towards the parade for float A, B, C, D, whatever it may be, we're going to track that. We're going to, when we make that money over, we're going to give the steering committee an email or information saying, hi, we made a donation in this amount. This person would like it to go towards this. Once you've reached your max capacity towards your money, towards floats or whatever, uh, you know, uh, participants or um, entertainers, whatever, that are in the parade that, you know, require fees, then we can say, thank you for the donation. They have reached their cap for the parade. Would you like to donate towards this event or this event or whatever? Okay. okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I got all that. It was just okay. who's, who's going to pay. So, the, so town the, town, the town is going to pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, 
All right. Carolyn, you good with that? Yeah, because oh, what, what happens is, you know, people will be specific for certain things and then others will be undesignated. And, yeah. you know, um, fireworks, for example, you know, you we're going to have ex parade expenses of, you know, s several yep. tens of thousands of dollars. So the, that that's going to take a while to fill up. But then we'll also have the fireworks. We know that's going to be, you know, $30,000 or something like that. And so um, there'll be specific donations people will want to go towards that but then once we raise that amount of money and we set it aside for say the fireworks because brenda will work that out um then we'll say well you could contribute towards this or you know it could be remain undesignated and that will just go into the pot yeah um, so but, um once yeah so once you've reached your cap or however that works yeah. But it's the reason being making the town pay for it because, you know, hopefully Friends of Deerfield will be able to raise the full amount, if not more. But if something happens, the town also has the money that they've been setting aside right. Right. Um, during right. the town warrant or town meetings to, to support the costs if needed. Okay. That way there is no liability on Friends of Deerfield to come up with all the money in case we can't because we're just, you know, we're doing the fundraising to support, right. and hopefully that's, that's, we will. That's okay. the intent, but if something happens where it doesn't, then, you know, there's that cushion that the town has for the, I think, will it be $40,000 by the time yeah, we're so, done? Yeah, it'll be $40,000, but, you know, for, we'll do it for two more years, and, um, I mean, we can even do it for a fifth year, too, but Hopefully, um, you know, most of the budgets seem to be in the hundred to two hundred thousand dollar range, even though, um, you know, for no matter what people are doing. So um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to raise that kind of money um, and, and make, you know, make it up so that mm -hmm. you know, we're never short. Ooh. That's why we're putting the money into the pot a little bit at a time so that, um, you know, we always have something to work with in the bank. Mm -hmm. Um, one nice thing that I know Hatfield did, um, we weren't available to attend, but they did a pop-up free concert um, a, a week or two ago. Um, and Peter, you had shared that information. Um, and, you know, that's a nice thing depending upon where um, our funds are, if we we're able to do, you know, something uh, as a surprise thing, um, because there are adequate funds to do it. Um, I'm sure it didn't cost them a fortune to do it uh, for the group that they brought in, but even if it was, you know, $1,000, it was just a fun surprise event for people to bring their lawn chairs and listen to music. So um, that, that, that was pretty cool. You know what, this brings me up the idea of we should reach out to the Cultural Council um, so that they partner with us that year, 2023 year, to do uh, events related to um, the 350th, because they do concerts, they do, you know, they sponsor all kinds of stuff. So. They're on my list, and I don't think can the town solicit directly for that. Um, well, well, it's a committee that would you be. You can get a grant, grant, can't we? Yes, no, it's a grant. Okay, a grant. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, it's a grant. It's a yearly grant, and so they would apply for the yearly grant. So what we want to do is partner with them. So we have, uh, I know Holly, it was lovely to have a pop-up concert, but why, why, why not plan on a couple concerts? We and, are. Uh, yeah. We've got those, we've got arts night outs or arts events. We've got concert series, um, like to piggyback over, I think the library does some and then PVMA or is it historic Deerfield does some right. to yeah. kind of go throughout the year dispersing. Um, but before I forget, what is the time frame for this for the for the gala? What what timing do we want it to start and end? Um, That's important to know. <laughs> are, are we going to go all the way into midnight? Yeah, it's it's New Year's Eve. Then then I would say maybe something like a seven seven thirty start. Seven. I mean that's a long stretch. Yeah, people will be. Do you think going to midnight is not good? I don't know. I, I do you think Holly? Do you think people will will? Uh... I'm, not, 
I'm not sure we'll keep the masses. Would we get, keep 50% of the people? I mean, we could do a champagne toast at 11 and keep the music going till midnight for people who want to stay. I mean, I, I don't know. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. So people don't well, feel uncomfortable if they do we want to do like a or I don't know if it would be a social hour at 6 p.m. for those who want to come and then have dinner served at seven. So that way it gives people time to get there and dinner starts at seven and then they can mingle and do whatever. Yeah, I think that's actually a better idea. Because then you're not having everybody be there at the exact same time. I, 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 if, if you're going to try to tow later towards some kind of toast later in the evening, I think having people there earlier than seven is going to be, Maybe. you know, you, you, most of your people are going to leave 9, 930. And you yeah, don't want it I'm to just, be a bust. I'm just I thinking mean, a social hour at six o'clock is just when everybody starts to come in and mingle and maybe they have cocktails or, you know, socialize or whatever. And then dinner served at seven. Yeah. Or I mean, you could seven and seven thirty. That gives people time. Yeah. I mean, you could even do 10 o'clock as an early toast to the new year and then another half hour of music and then close it. I mean, it doesn't have to be like that it goes to midnight, but I think going more than a four hour block of time, you're going to lose people. You may lose older people, but you may keep younger people. Like you. <laughs> Do you know what time we go to bed in this house? Way <laughs> earlier than you, Mr. Thomas. Yeah. I get emails from you after midnight. I've been yeah. in bed since 1030, 11 <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> so no no and usually we do not stay up till midnight not oh. every not every new year's okay <laughs> but i my thought is like because it's a special event if people are planning some people may want to stay late some people may leave early i think you're a hit or a miss but i mean it's new year's eve why do it on new year's eve if you're not going to kick it off into the new year that i guess that's my thought yeah well, if, you, if you've got part of the option, I mean, if you extend it to New Year's to those that can or are willing or interested in holding out, they'll they'll stay. Yeah, uh, I think you're going to have a mixed bag of people, but I agree with Holly that we should have a later start just because. Um, so what if we do a social hour 630 to 730? Yeah, that's a good compromise. And then dinner served at 8 or 730? I think you're going to be, well, I don't know. I, it's kind of I late think, to eat, I though. would think 7.30 would be a time yeah. to start. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm a, Eight o'clock dinner is wicked late. <laughs> I do it all the time, but that's that's just my schedule. I mean, it's, most people, I think, waiting that long. Uh, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do a social hour from six to seven for those who want to come in. Dinner will be served between seven at 715 we'll make it an easy compromise i think i think if you're making it a new year's eve event six o'clock start is ridiculously early yeah but a social hour doesn't mean people have to be there at six it's just a you you can come then but dinner starts at the, or the events and presentations start at you know seven I, are you still I'm think that's it. not I'm going to leave it in the committee's hands. Yeah. Okay. Do you have other questions from the friends? Um, no, that was the one thing I forgot to ask. Holly, you had a question about insurance. Yeah. So my, my tag on from who's paying for what the next question, um, because it came up when I talked to the water department as a potential staging area for the parade, um, they said that they would want, and I presume because the water department is a separate entity within the town. Is that correct, Carolyn? It's separate from the town, yes. Okay. So they probably want a certificate of insurance. Which they is do. No, no issue, no issue. Okay, so they did ask about that. So if 
I guess that question would be regardless of what we do during the year, if it's at another facility and they want that, we can give it. This is uh, the 350th is a normal town event. So okay. you, we, all we do is call our insurance agent and, and have a, you know, issue to like the water district or issue to Deerfield Academy, the uh, certificate of insurance. And it just verifies the certificate of insurance just verifies that we have. Right. You know, yeah. I, I've, I've, I've had that with my work that we've had to get them. So, yeah. Okay. That's good. And I did get a verbal from the um, South Deerfield Water District that uh, we could use their area for staging. Um, and there's quite, quite a bit of room there. Um, and obviously I filled you guys in on some of the other parts of that. It will evolve as we go forward, but that's at least a good starting point for us. I like that. I checked it out after after you had shared where you know about that, and that's perfect. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's really nice to do that. Um, yeah, Holly, I think your present, your uh, summary of all your meetings was. Um, really well done and I, I, it, it gave me a positive feel that we were moving ahead in a uh, you know a nice direction so yeah yeah I, I will I will add your minutes or your notes to the um, meeting minutes tonight okay and um, for tonight's minutes separate from that report I sent out could you just add the the verbal for from the water department um, for the um, a, a staging area for the start of the parade. It won't be the only one, but it's a good expanse of property. Um, you know, the uh, from the emergency dispensing site drill that we had the industrial park, you can get a huge amount of um, looping through there. Um, the, the only problem is we'll have to cross the highway. Yeah and the highway is gonna stay open. Yeah. So we're trying to possibly, if we need additional area, look at the state um, highway um, area because then okay. we maybe could shrink up 116 to still be two lane highway, but over enough that we could have access. Yeah, um, that makes I, sense. Again, the other thing that um, Adam Sikulowski said of rerouting traffic from the Sunderland Bridge um, around River Road and back up to the lights, then that whole area, including the lower parking for Sugarloaf also could be staging area. So, uh, you know, we might have some good options um, for what we have even leading off a river road up to that area. Okay, perfect. So, um, and, and still keep traffic moving because there was, um, I guess, some hiccup with the Sunderland Parade. And so um, with, with what happened caused a huge issue in Deerfield and we wanna be good neighbors to everybody and not create a traffic problem. Yeah. Okay, that's it for me. All right, folks, uh, we're through the agenda. It's only 8.19. Good. Um, have anybody got any last minute items to bring up here? Nope. Nope. All I'll right. Try to, I'll try I'll to get call. an email out to everybody tomorrow. I'll call the question for adjournment. I made a motion to adjourn. I guess Holly's got the second too. So, <laughs> I Carolyn, I. <laughs> all those, all those in favor. Holly Lankowski, I. Jen Remillard, I. <laughs> Peter Thomas, I. Oh, unanimous! How awesome! <laughs>